Hi artist, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is tutorial part one of our watercolor mini tutorials. The things that you basically need to start your watercolor journey are these materials. First is your watercolor palette. Any watercolor palette is okay. But as for me, I'll be using a prank watercolor palette of 16 colors. Then paintbrushes. I use Sakura paintbrushes. And for the watercolor paper I have here, and I will be using a Canson brand. It has a 200 GSM and it claims that it's acid free, good for wet on wet techniques, and it has rough and smooth textures. So, as you can see, this is the rough part of the paper. It looks really textured while on the back is the smooth paper. Well, the one that we'll be using for this mini tutorial is the smooth textured part of the watercolor paper so that the watercolor paints will um, flow gently and nicely into the paper. So I already have drawn the boxes where we are to paint and it is already labeled with the technique that we'll use. Wet on wet technique, a wet on dry technique, slotchy effect, using tissue paper, using salt, and additional techniques which is the um, splatter effect and the sprinkle effect. So let's get started! The first thing that you have to make sure is that you should have your paints already prepared and into the saturation that you want. So wet and wet technique means wet paint on wet paper. I'll First, apply water in the box that I've already made, and we have to make sure to cover the area very carefully and not to rub the brush on the paper. And then, after we put the water on the paper, we apply the wet paint on the wet surface of the paper. Notice that the water is pulling on the side and we don't want that happening or else we'll have a rough paint edges so i'm dabbing on a dry brush so to get the excess paint this technique is good if you wanted to for the paint to just spread evenly and to make it more smooth looking after it dries The next that we'll do is the wet on dry technique. This basically means wet paint on a dry paper. And we won't apply the water in the box. So instead, we'll directly use the paint and fill in the box very carefully. Again, make sure not to rub your brush roughly on the water on the paper. And this technique is actually good because you have more control with what's going on. The next is the splotchy effect. So we'll basically do the same manner as of the wet on wet technique. But the difference is that we are going to... Um, randomly dab the color in places that you want and here I'm just letting the watercolor play with itself so we're pretty much relying with the effect that it's going to give us when it dries after Another one is the wet on wet using tissue paper. It's practically the same thing as of the other two wet on wet technique, but the thing is that we'll use a tissue paper to give a negative effect. 
and you should be ready with tissue paper when you're doing this kind of um, technique because it's needed okay so I've already applied the paint here So we have our tissue and I'm just scrunching the tissue paper and I will just have to dab it on the wet surface. This technique is good if you wanted to lift the paint off the paper or if you wanted to just give a negative effect on the color that you've applied in the paper. This is also useful if you want to make clouds for your landscape or if you wanted to just um, reduce the color from the paper and then the next that we're going to use or we're going to do is the wet on wet with salt it's still the same thing as of the earlier but the difference is that we'll put salt to give an effect which I'll show you later when everything dries already So I have salt here and I'm just going to put little salt and I won't spread it everywhere. So I can show you the effect of the salt when it's isolated in some places only. The last that we're going to do is the splatter and the sprinkle effect. With splatter, I'm just dabbing a pool of color and we'll use a straw to blow in the surface and to create a splatter effect. You can also achieve this if you have paint already prepared and then example, you're trying to just throw it on the paper itself so it's basically like oh, splatter splatter something like that and if you see it's giving a very nice vibe on the paper and lastly we have the sprinkle effect where i'll use a number 12 paper castle flat brush and take a paint and gently sprinkle it on the paper I changed to black paint so you can see it more clearly. One trick also is to use a clean toothbrush. This technique is helpful with making galaxies and stars and I'll show you a tutorial about that next time. So I'm giving updates and our paints have already dried. You can see wet on wet, this is the finished look. Wet on dry, splotchy effect, my favorite. It's really nice. And using tissue paper, then with salt, we've already removed the salt and this is the result of what we did earlier. our splatter effect and lastly our sprinkles effect so i really like the splotchy effect and i'm also wondering what are your favorites in these techniques that we used comment it down below so i'll know your opinions about the techniques that we just did so i've already prepared the colors that we're going to use we have blue green brown and black and then the first technique that we're going to use is the wet on wet technique using tissue paper. We're just going to get a blue um, watercolor paint and then we're going to first um, wet the paper 
and then the next thing that we're going to do is to get the color blue band and we're going to gently apply it on the surface of our wet paper so you can see that the paint is spreading evenly we're just going to get the excess um, blob of water from the surface of the paper and then we're going to prepare our tissue paper and again we're scrunching it a bit and we're going to dab it on this surface so we can lift some of the colors and to have the negative effect and then since i'm not really comfortable with how light the color blue is i'm i'm adding a little bit of blue for the clouds and it's giving it more texture and i'm happy about it and we'll get back to it later so we're going to wait till the surface is going to dry so we can add more details so now we're going to be using the same blue color to add color to our ocean we're going to be placing a darker saturation of blue into the line that we have and then the next that we're going to do is to get a cleaner brush and gently um, pull the color down the surface so we can have this gradient effect because usually when you see the horizon um, the color of the sea from the very far end is very dark and the color of the water um, near us is lighter okay so we're going to get a brown color now and we're going to apply the brown color paint into our mountain gently apply color into our mountain and actually got a wrong here because i've used a bigger brush and there's a lot of paint into the brush itself that's why the color has spread and one thing that i also did wrong is because i didn't wait till the watercolor that we've applied earlier to be dry well i mean you get what i mean right so yeah i'm reapplying the color blue into the surface of the um ocean again and then in order for us to um, apply another color into our ground i'm actually mixing um yellow with brown so to make a lighter shade of brown so we're going to apply in this area gently you can just have it in one stroke and it's okay And then, so as we're trying to wait for our ground to dry, we're going to go back with our mountain and add more ground by using this number two Faber Castell paint brush. Just add more brown, nothing really toxic. We're just making a simple tutorial about a simple landscape. So to start up with your watercolor journey. And then since the ground has already dried, we're going to get another darker saturation of brown and we're going to apply it to the drawing of a fence that we did 
here in our um, drawing and we're going to apply little bits of um, color there and we're going to gently um, put a line so to make the fence more defined okay so we're going to wait till that dries and again i'm adding a little bit of brown to add more definition to the ground and since we're trying to wait till the ground is dried we're going to go back to our clouds and i'm going to apply more blue darker saturation of blue into our clouds and i'm careful not to really touch the negative areas produced by our tissue but i'm gently placing the color blue paint into our painting i don't want this to have a really hard texture that's why i'm going to get a damp um, brush and i'm going to just reapply and remix the color so to blend and then we're going to just make our grasses here and we're going to apply into the parts where i've drawn using this pencil this is the only part that we're going to do but if you're making your own um feel free to add whatever you want and whenever you want there we're using the same color green that of the swatches that i did on the right side and gently try to pull up the um, grasses up and then since i wanted to have a darker shade of um, green i mixed brown to the green color and we're going to reapply it on top of the first layer of the lighter green that we did I'm going to also make a tutorial about grasses and I'm going to also make a tutorial about rock um, I'm going to just give you basic videos about how to make certain structures when you're trying to make a landscape of your own And the next thing that I did is I just applied a little bit of black on the fence that we did so to give it more kick of a color if you get what I mean and we're just going to let that try and I'm really happy to show you guys the simple watercolor painting tutorial that we did right now I hope that you're happy with um, the simple water tutorial that we did. I'll be posting on the description box my Instagram link so you can tag me with the painting that you did. It is named as the Ivanga Artist. And you can also tag me using Facebook. It's again Ivanga Artist. So that's all. I'm really happy that you're here and you watch my video and that I hope that you've learned a lot from this tutorial. Thank you so much. I hope you watch the next video. Bye bye.